Good morning. Denise Dryden here doing my weekly Sunday presentation on the different ways that we can approach our lives, our relationships, and <laughs> our interactions with the world, right? Um, so today I want to talk about entrainment because it's a really good, it's a really cool concept and I haven't talked about it since gosh, 2019. So it's been a while and it's time to revisit this. So what comes to mind when you think of the word entrainment? Have you heard about it before? Because what we want to do is we want to look at it and define it. So the way that I would, you know, I went to the dictionary, right? You know, getting the up in the morning and the first thing I'm doing is, is, is getting a context for a foundation of a word. So um, to entrain is to draw along with, to drag. Think of a train, you know, like here's the train and entrainment means I'm gonna drag everybody along with me, right? It's to cause something, to create something, to make something part of a flow. So to carry along with it. And in an alchemical environment, it's where you put something in liquid and the liquid moves it from one thing to the other, right? It holds the bubbles, it holds the, 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 the um, enzymes, and then it moves it from one thing to the other. And what I also like is that it is what happens when one person and another person are in a room together and they naturally start to sync up. It happens in acting, it ha happens in improv, is when, when they naturally sync up and they find their own rhythm. So it's a natural phenomenon. It is when one entity synchronizes or resonates with another entity, so human, animal, nature, could be anything, right? Starts to sort of fall in sync and responds to the most powerful vibration. It, that's the most important part, is it responds to the most powerful vibration. So when we have this ability to synchronize with one another, um, there's some really interesting things that happen. Like um, there's this chiropractor in Kalispell, Montana, who has a treatment room with four beds. And he brings four clients in at one time, and then he works on them individually. And what happens is whatever he's working, work he's doing on that one patient is also being done for the other three. So they get sort of four for one treatment while he's in training in his office. So how do we bring this into something that you can do, something that we want to be aware of, and, 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 and sort of look at that you have the, the ability, you have the absolute ability to influence, to calm, to hold, and to stretch beyond yourself. This is the coolest part, right? So if we can entrain, and we know what entrainment is, um, um, let, let's go through that. So that's what the rest of this video is about, is what do we do? How do we, how do we entrain, and what's the most important parts to think about? So in my previous videos over the last um, year in 2020, I focused on how to stay grounded, how to breathe, how to get out of, how to recognize when you're triggered and what to do about that. So that we're breathing, we're holding, we're communicating and we're setting boundaries, right? So this is just sort of like, it, it's almost like whatever topic I came in on it, this is what we were practicing. So now that we're in 2021, let's take it out there and let's start using these tools and expand them beyond ourselves and sort of see how do we help or influence others, right? So the most important thing first and foremost is you as a centered, grounded human being have a lot to offer. You are the pace setter. You are the energy that everything else can sync up with. That's so cool. So if we are this powerful, also what comes with it is that, 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 when, that when something is in power, there's also responsibility. So if I'm a powerful being who can influence or set the pace for the environment that I'm in, how do I do that with responsibility? And how do I do that without it being sort of push, a burden on me, um, a requirement that it's actually an opportunity to see what else we could do? So let's play with this. So look around in your immediate area or bring to mind in your immediate area. So you may be living with your love, your partner, right? And so you may notice that your partner can go up or down and that you're aware of that. You may have kids at home in school. Some of them might still be on um, digital classrooms. Some of them are in sort of different scenarios in public schools. And they may be in various stages of happy to miserable. Some of you, um, like uh, here in Washington, were allowed to go 
out to coffee shops or restaurants as long as there's outdoor dining. So there's this little coffee shop that has fire pits and we sit there and I notice that sometimes there's people around us that are angry, frustrated, scared. And so there's this tiny little patio with, you know, five, ten people on it. And sometimes the energy out there is kind of interesting. Or let's say that you're working on a Zoom call and there's two or three other screens and it's sort of flat, boring, nothing's really happening and it's sort of, uh, you know, um, ad nauseum, something that is difficult to hang in there. Or in the case of um, a new mom, new dad, you have a little tiny baby that's agitated, that's still trying to get to know the vibration on the world and how do you hold that baby while you're dealing with their agitation, their restlessness, their triggers. So those are some examples I could come up with. What are some that you, that come to mind for you as we're talking about this? Now, um, before I go into the tools, what I want to do is that I moved outside today because I could hear the birds. But more than that, there's this little pond behind me and we've had so much rain that it's now turned into this babbling brook. So you can just hear the constant beautiful sound of running water. It doesn't have an attachment, just keeps moving as it goes along. So notice that there's that sound behind me as I'm talking, okay? So first and foremost, I want you to do this with me. So first, um, observe, notice, look around your room, look around the area where you're at, get a picture in your mind, get a feeling in your body. What's going on? What do you notice? Okay. So we sort of like expand ourselves and we start to pick up on what's going on around us. Number two, without judgment, without an agenda to interfere and without attachment, what we want to do is notice what could I offer if I had something to offer here. Again, this is a gift. This isn't a, I'm going to control it, I'm going to shape it, I'm going to stop it. It is a gift, right? So then without judgment or attachment, what can I offer around here? Okay. Number three. Then what we do is we hold within our body different concepts. Concepts that make a difference. Concepts that are easy to access that are even fun for us to hold. Like compassion. Peace. Love. We can hold happiness. We can hold joy. We can hold playfulness. Ease. Lightness creativity, flexibility. So hold on to that energy of something that you can hold in your body, right? So bring that in. So for me, I'm just going to hold peace right now because between the birds and the rock, they're mostly robins are so busy and this babbling creek and the fact that I'm outside and it's not pouring rain, there's peace, right? So now that you have an idea of the environment of what you notice and what you can hold, now what we do is we ground ourselves. We take that root chakra, we take the base of our spine, we take our feet and we just plop it down into the earth and we dig in strong and deep. I like um, Damien Wynn is an energy worker and he talks about taking the grounding in to every cell in your body. So what you do is you bring light, you bring groundedness into the cells and you let the cells hold it. You don't go up and go, I, I, I'm, I'm so full of light now, or you don't go down to the earth and go, I'm, I'm anchored and I'm flat. You, what you do is you bring it in to your cells. It's a beautiful concept. Number five, bring your breathing into balance. Find your own rhythm, make it effortless. Find a way that you can just breathe. Okay. And that, and sometimes I'll just even rock just a tad bit on one hip or the other, or if I've got my hands on my, on my legs, I'll just t do a, a really light tap or the old mom and me will always just start to rock just a tad bit when I want to bring my breathing into rhythm. Okay. Now that we have a frog going off in the background. It's so cool. Number six, without being attached to the concept that you're holding. Focus on what's out there that's bigger than you and spread it when you exhale. So you breathe in, you spread it out. Peace. You sustain yourself, 
you spread peace out and you spread it out with again without attachment doesn't matter where it lands don't care sit in the dinner table and the kids are just nasty and, <laughs> or I can't get my partner to look up from their screen right you know and all of a sudden you're just like just hold peace spread it out if you're breathing and don't look at him like do you know what I'm trying to do right now <laughs> what you want to do is you just without attachment you want to do this and then number seven you do what's normal you talk you interact you do a video all the while that you're holding and with every breath out you're expanding peace and you do it rhythmically rhythmically you're holding right so number eight you're in your body managing your actions and you are present this is what presence is i'm just i notice my breath i'm breathing in i'm breathing out and i can move when i need to i can participate when i need to i am fully present and aware of what's going on right so tips as we're doing this and we're just going to keep spreading peace get out of the analytical mind thing like is it working how do I know it's working and, and and let go because your mind isn't gonna be able to understand this this is a torso job right this is heart this is solar plexus this is navel this is sacral this is where all of your energy center starts to move and expand out so this isn't a mind job this is a torso job another good tip is that you know presence comes from the way that you respond to any place that you're at. Presence is just simply holding your voice in that vibration, that vibration of peace, choosing your words that hold that vibration, and you know, knowing that your guidance is inside and it's gonna keep you on this entrainment, which is I'm gonna hold peace in my body no matter what happens. That just happens to be my word. Your word can be completely different. Another one is to be flexible, adaptive, to shift topics, to be able to get up and shift locations, to shift um, it, wherever your environment goes. Oh, we were at the table, now we're overdoing the dishes. Or now I'm over here helping my son with his homework. Or now I'm out for a walk. Or now I'm on a coaching call. I hold that presence. I hold that entrainment of peace. So we're present, we're responsive, we're spontaneous, and we're vibrational, okay? Now, another really good tip is catch yourself when you're struggling. If you're like, this is really hard, don't you guys understand? I'm holding peace for everybody right now. And sometimes our little martyr victim will come up like, you have no idea how hard this is. Or my favorite is like, I can't hear you guys because I'm trying to concentrate on la 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 la. I'm trying to zone out so I can do my own thing, right? So what happens when we're denying or we're blocking or we're striving to hold this? Oh, this is really hard. Or we're attached. I've got to see this in my kids' faces. I've got to see this on Zoom. I've got to know that I'm effective. This is not gonna work. This isn't something that you can show any attachment to. You just do it. Another one is that you're patient with yourself. This is a new strong level of awareness. This is not something that comes really like instantly. The first time you do it, you go, I got it. It's like you do it and you do it and you do it until it becomes easier. I was with uh, um, Alan Seal at the Transformational Presence Global um, Gathering and what he would do is he'd come up in front of us and we're all presence trainers, right? And he'd say, bring yourself to presence. And there are like just a few of us <laughs> who could go, oh. And then there were some who were like, give me a minute. And they have to bring themselves in. And some have this whole ritual where they have to go in to be present. It's all okay. Just as whatever you're learning. Bring yourself in, ground. You find your rhythm. Hold a concept and start to expand it. So also I find that imagery helps. Um, for me, I'm a triple water sign and I have tried to ground for decades and it's kind of like, I am grounding, don't you understand? And it was, I wasn't. I thought I was grounding, but I wasn't. Until I came up with this image that as a triple water sign, I'm much better as one of those beautiful fountains. So what I do is I put myself on the ground and I imagine one of those fountains in, in Rome 
or you know in any of these palatial places where there's this low body of water that's held and it has a little fountain in it and it's just like boom and it's never gonna move and it's always providing a little sparkle of water fountain and so to me it's like it's like that whole base boom that's what grounded feels like for me so find out what your own version of imagery helps you and hold you because you know this is where we do we do us you do you you do your part in bringing yourself into who you are settling into the earth embodying holding some concepts in using your torso as a power tool and putting it out there and putting really beautiful concepts like peace love compassion joy out there because this is your gift to the world this is what we have to offer so this is the kind of stuff I've been doing a lot more work with over the last six months and it's been fabulous so if this is something you're interested in learning more about give me a call or you can always click on send me a, a comment here on YouTube on Facebook on um, LinkedIn um, or you can find me at denisedrydencoaching.com. You have a wonderful Sunday, wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you next next Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.